Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video on financial analysis. And in this video, we are going to be revisiting Kazoo. So many of you will have seen the first video we did on this company. Uh, they launched in about 2018, and we did our first video in January 2000 and, uh, 2021. Um, so we didn't have a lot of data to work on. For those of you who are not familiar, Kazoo is an online car retailer. So rather than going down to your secondhand car dealer, uh, you type in what you want online. Uh, and it's kind of it's basically like Auto Trader, but it's a sort of private company. So it's all their cars and they're all conditioned and they come with the with the Kazoo guarantee. They stick them in a in a lorry and then drop them off in your driveway. You drive around with it. And if you're happy with your purchase, that's great. And if you're not, uh, they'll take it back within about 14 days. So it sounds pretty convenient. And in fact, it's so convenient. I can tell you my mum is one of their customers. So she has actually bought her uh, latest car from Kazoo very happy with it okay so company sounds like it's doing uh, some good stuff on the customer service but we are less interested in the customer service and more interested in the numbers behind the business so um we are going to have a look at the numbers in a minute this is a request from one of our subscribers this is a pavel roll who said that he enjoyed the last video uh the kazoo video and would love to see an update and he's a new subscriber so uh, remind me, welcome back to all of you who are subscribers. If you are looking at this for the first time, please, please, please do subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like and share. We're trying to boost the uh, the uh, the numbers of this uh, channel. So please do uh, subscribe, like and share. Uh, if you have any companies you want to look at, then please do put uh, the uh, the notes in the chat. Um, let me know which you'll look, which you'd like me to look at, and why. I'm um, trying to limit it to one company. If I get lots of companies, get, get a little bit confusing. Um, and uh, and and yeah, and 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 also do leave your comments on these videos. Um, obviously, um, it doesn't cost anything to be polite. I don't get everything right. I'm happy with that. I'm not an expert in every single sector, every single company I look at. So if you've got a different opinion to me, then please, please do share them in the comment section so without further ado let's go and have a look at the financial statements of this company so here we are um i've got the financial statements kind of already so i'm um, quite difficult to find these are uh so kazoo is now listed it's a it's a uk company but it's listed in america as far as i can make out i'm not sure exactly the kind of financial structure but i know that the cayman islands um, are involved in it as well so it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors but they are listed so they're filing their accounts but they're filing their accounts uh, in the u.s format the sec which isn't quite as friendly as the uk um, so you can find this just type in kazoo and your report and accounts you'll end up in their investors um, uh, section and then if you click on the link um, they don't call them the annual report and accounts but there's very few um, uh, documents there um, uh, that'll take you through and then you just have to scroll through I think we're looking at page uh, you've got to go look at uh, so, so it's right down in the kind of the financial statements right down the bottom we're on page uh, what are we 119 uh, of the PDF file 119 of 245 so we're a fair distance down if that makes sense OK, so let's jump in and have a look at the numbers and see what they are telling us. So we're looking at 2022. Here they are. So we're in thousands of pounds. So one thousand million pounds is about one point two billion pounds of turnover. And now this is a phenomenal top line growth story. So top line from 2019, which you can't see, to 2020, the top line growth was 14,000%. They then did another 300% 2020 to 21, and another 91% on top in 2022. So top line, these guys, you know, they are expanding, they're buying other companies, they're growing very rapidly. And if you watch the last video, we talked about, you know, they need enough rocket fuel to kind of clear the atmosphere. That was the analogy we were using uh, to accelerate this growth. These guys really are accelerating the growth. However, look at the cost of sales. This is a low margin business. I pointed at that, that out last time. It remains the same. 98% cost of sales, leaving them with a gross margin of 2%. That means that if you buy a car for uh, for, for say 10,000 pounds, 
uh, from Kazoo, it costs them about £9,800. Now, don't forget that they're buying the car. So I don't know if it's webuyanycar.com or something equivalent to that, but they're kind of, you know, they have these kind of, you know, these big buying um, uh, uh, mechanisms out the back. They bring them in, then they have to refurbish them. They have to kind of turn them into, you know, really nice, to, you know, nice, um, clean cars. They've got to sort of fix all the all the faults, et cetera, et cetera, and turn them into something which is good enough to sell to you or me or my mum. So um, they're just not making a gross profit. I mean, look at this, you know. OK, so so beforehand, they were making a loss. They were making a loss in 2019. They were making a loss in 2020. They are making a profit but they're just not making anything like the sort of profit that these guys need to make in order to cover all of their overhead. So look at this admin expenses, massive admin expenses, half a billion pounds. Um, they're just not even close to washing their face. A lot of money on marketing expenses. So all the adverts, footballers, T-shirts that they're printed on, um, more selling and distribution expenses. So this is the cost of shipping that stuff around, sticking it into um, uh, sticking cars on lorries and shipping them around the uh, country once you've decided to buy them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so these guys, the loss from operations. So, you know, as their top line is growing, so their loss from operations is also growing um, just as rapidly. That's a 54 percent operating loss margin um which is not healthy and and this is something that really needs to reverse and looking at the kind of the tightness of those margins you can start to see that they're going to have to be selling billions and billions and billions of cars to get close to covering these what are supposed to be fixed costs but of course if you sell more cars you're going to have to distribute more cars so you can see that they're not actually fixed costs and obviously the admin associated with running this business is going up as the business increases so i'm not convinced that they can op they can continue to operate on those low trading margins up here they just need the trading margin to generate the profit to be able to cover those overheads and they're just not there yet so either they need to put their prices up or they need to pay less for the vehicles or somehow they need to take the costs out um and and and, and this is the big challenge because of course you know, we're very price sensitive you know if, if you know and they are expensive on on kazoo you know they're they're not as cheap as you could probably get um, uh, you know, as a private sale through Auto Trader, but then you know these guys are a dealership, and you kind of get all the guarantees that go around that. So it does come at a cost, but you know they're just not making the money that they need to. Those costs uh, that the prices have got to go up if they're going to have any chance of actually getting this company to profitability. That's my opinion. I may be wrong though. If you think I'm wrong, leave a note in the uh, in the comments. Be polite though. Um, looking further down the income statement, we see the finance expense has jumped. Um, and this means that they have now got a huge, uh, a lot more debt on board. Fifty three million pounds of interest expense up from about four or five billion pounds in the previous year. Note uh, eight will tell us a little bit more about that. Um, uh, we're going to have a look at that in a minute when we have a look at note nine as well, because note nine, you'll notice that last year, a big driver of the sort of substantial loss they made was this negative 214. And then for some reason, there seems to be a positive 194 coming through in 2022. Now, that's those are big numbers. That's 200 million extra loss last year and a 200 million extra profit this year. And the fact that those two numbers are roughly the same makes me think, mm, hold on a sec, are they trying to shift profits uh, from... Uh, you know, book a loss last year, shift it into the profits in this year. Um, well, they're not actually. And we can find out exactly what's going on there by having a look at note number nine. So here we are at note number nine. In fact, we can just see note uh, number um, uh, uh, number eight, which was the finance expense. And we can see here most of the interest, which didn't exist in the previous years, is due to what's uh, called convertible notes. So convertible notes are a form of debt which you are allowed to convert into equity at some point in the future. They didn't have them in previous years. They now do have them. We'll look at again in a little bit more detail when we look at the balance sheet and cash flow. But we're really interested here in note number nine. What is this kind of this big negative in last year and big positive this year? Well, the negative is the expense on the transaction. Now, um, just to explain what the transaction is uh, with a capital T, um, so the transaction was uh, these guys are now listed 
and the way they, they didn't go through the normal listing, uh, what they did is they reversed into a SPAC. So just so we're clear on what happened here, a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition vehicle um, was effectively a shell company set up in America uh, and it was listed. OK, it had I don't know how much money it had in the bank, but let's say for sake of argument, it had a billion dollars. Um, so it has a billion dollars in the bank and it looks for a company to buy and it bought uh, this company, Kazoo. So effectively, it then buys Kazoo. It effectively then becomes Kazoo because, you know, that is what it uh, that's the entire company. Um, uh, and I think it was uh, at its height. It was valued at six point five billion pounds. OK, so what? What was happening here is that uh, people were buying shares in the SPAC and say, oh, this company is going to find gold. It's going to find a really profitable company. We'll pay a lot of shares. So basically, you're kind of, you know, people were paying like, you know, 10 pounds for a share in a company that only had one pound in the bank, for example. That's kind of the 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 uh, the, 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 the similarity here. But the one pound was going to be invested in gold and it was going to turn into, you know, a million pounds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyway, the point is um, that the costs associated with that transaction, that reverse into the SPAC, 200 million pounds or 250, 241 million pounds, um, they were treated as an expense. OK, they're not didn't happen in 2020, not going to happen in 2022. So that's that number there, which we circled. Um, what we've got here is a profit. Now, this is quite interesting. I'm going to speculate here. Um, uh, and this is my guess. We've got the fair value movement in the convertible notes and embedded to derivatives and the fair value movement in the warrants. Now, convertible note is effectively debt. So uh, and this debt is is tradable. So, uh, you know, it, 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 you can you can you can sell it on to somebody else. Um, uh, so what happens is that if, if you think about if you. If you lend a company, um, uh, you know, say a hundred pounds, and you say, "Oh, this company owes me a hundred pounds," I've got a piece of paper here saying this company owes me a hundred pounds, and then you find out that the company is about to go bust, and you say to your friend, "Will you buy this piece of paper from me because they owe me a hundred pounds? They'll owe you a hundred pounds. I'll sell it to you for a hundred pounds." Your friend's going to go, "No, no, no, no! I'm not going to pay hundred pounds. I'll pay fifty quid for it because the risk has gone up." Okay. Um, now, these are traded in the market, and therefore. The, the, the value is um, is being set by the market. So what it looks to me like, and again, this is my kind of speculation, and I may be wrong, is that they have these convertible notes. They've gone down in value because the risks associated with them have gone up in value. And therefore, uh, effectively, uh, they can show the convertible notes at the fair value, either market value on their balance sheet, rather than at the historical cost. So not what they borrowed, but what they are worth, what it would cost them to buy them back. Um, uh, and uh, effectively, they can book a profit on that. Now, a good example of this is NatWest. So NatWest, for example, um, was you know had borrowed lots of money um, back in 2007. It then nearly went bust. The value of that debt went down because nobody wanted to buy it. Nobody wanted to lend money to NatWest because they thought they weren't going to get their money back. So NatWest itself went into the market and bought its own debt back and booked a massive profit on that. OK, so that's a bit like, you know, you borrowing money from a friend uh, and then saying, oh, you know what? I, I don't think I can pay you back. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 50p in the pound, for example. Um, probably an ex friend by now, if that's the way you treat them. Anyway, so I'm not sure this is the good thing, because this is effectively saying that because the risk of associated with this company has gone up, the value of the debt has gone down and they're showing that um, that movement as a profit in their um, income statement. That's what my take on this is. Um, which is quite interesting when you think about it, because it means that you can actually book a profit. Um, uh, uh, you can book a profit um, if your company is more likely to go bust. Slightly bizarre, but hey, um, I don't make the rules. Um, anyway, so there's the income statement. Um, uh, and we come down to loss for the year. Here we go. Um, so this is the loss for the year. It's increased from uh, 100 million uh, in uh 20, uh, 20 in fact it was um uh, let me see it was it was about 18 million back in 2019 then 100 million in 2020 up to a uh, half a billion in 2021 and now they're at 704 million pounds uh, sorry dollars um uh, in uh in, sorry pounds 704 million pounds in 2022 uh, and of course if you then ignore uh, this which is a kind of you know non 
a non-profit transaction, it's certainly in my view, um, unless they've actually exercised um, and they've managed to buy those warrants back, um, ignoring that, then you're at basically the company's making a billion dollar lot, a billion pound loss. So it's making a 1.2 billion in sales and it's making a bottom line of a billion pounds. That's kind of my take on it. Um, give or take the odd 100 million, but then what's 100 million between friends? So there's the income statement. Um, let's have a look at the balance sheet. So balance sheet, here are the, um, the assets. Uh, these are the, um, the assets that they need to um, run the business. We've got property, plant and equipment, and then leased assets, which is just more property, plant and equipment, but they don't own it. Um, some intangibles, you'll notice the intangibles have gone down significantly. Now, this is um, due to the writing off of goodwill. So it's worth having a look at that. We'll have a look at note um, uh, 16. Um, property planted equipment has gone down probably mainly through probably disposals and depreciation. I, they're not doing a lot of investing at the moment. Um, the right of use assets has gone up. That just basically helps their cash flow. Um, but that note 16, let's just go and have a quick look at note 16. So here we are looking at note 16 um, uh, and in the bottom uh, right hand corner, you can see I've just circled it that um, uh, this is the book value. I the value of the assets, less the depreciation. This is for the intangible assets, things you can't touch, including goodwill uh, and goodwill um, very quickly is the difference between what you pay for a company and the fair value of its net assets. So if you buy if you buy a company which is very profitable and you pay a lot of money for it, but you don't get really very many assets and you think about like a like a coffee shop, for example, doesn't really have assets, got a couple of tables and chairs, rents the office. Um, but it may be a very popular coffee shop on a very popular route um, uh, and lots of people are coming in. And so effectively, you'll pay a lot of money to buy that business um, because of the, of the future revenue. OK, so um, they had basically they had a lot of goodwill uh, last year, that 261, um, and they got no goodwill this year. And the reason is that they have done this big impairment loss. So there's an impairment loss on goodwill. And they've also written off uh, a lot of the development costs and software. Now, these guys got lovely websites, very user friendly. Um, uh, but at the moment, um, they value that website and all the sort of the associated technology at about 16 million pounds. OK, that's not something you can touch, by the way. And I think you'd struggle to put that on eBay and sell it um, if you got into problems. Obviously, you've got tables and chairs. You can sell those anyway. Big old, big old negative um, impairment loss coming through here. So that's going to be a big driver, maybe a one off driver in 2022. Um, that goodwill. Um, we scroll down a little bit. So quite interesting here. Um, the goodwill are sitting in terms of the UK and France and Germany. Basically, they've just written it off. So, um, you know, when you buy a company, you say this is what we paid for it. This is the value of the company. And then you look at it and you go, actually, it's not worth that. Um, uh, and we have to write off that goodwill. And they basically just said the UK operation, just as far as I can make out, is, is worth nothing or certainly isn't worth any more than the assets that were bought. Don't forget this goodwill ar arose when the SPAC bought Kazoo effectively. So it's all a little bit sort of complicated and, and accounting shenan shenanigans. But um, yeah, you know, they, 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 they've done this big write off. Current assets, um, inventory, the inventory's gone down. I think that's probably a good thing. They're getting the inventory under control. Um, you know, it looks like they had quite a lot of inventory in the previous year. But, you know, if you're going to turn over 1.2 billion, you need a lot of inventory. Um, I reckon that their inventory turnover, and this is a back of an envelope calculation, is that it takes them about um, 90 days to sell um, a car from buying it. That's down from 138 days. Uh, in 2021 and then 174 days in 2020. So, you know, their, their inventory turnover is good, but it, it's it's marginal. I mean, it's good to see that, you know, that they're on top of it, but it, it is pretty marginal. Trade and other receivables, pretty small because you tend to pay up front, you know, you'll pay for your car and then they'll deliver it, for example, and they've got cash in the bank. Now, this is an important number. 245 nearly 250 million pounds nearly quarter of a billion pounds of cash up from the previous year but as we will see in the cash flow if you're making a loss of 700 million then uh, the only way you can generate more cash is um uh you know, through funding effectively um in terms of the liabilities uh, scroll down to the bottom half of the balance sheet the liabilities um they've got 
got uh, uh, here. Here are the um, uh, they, they've got a lot of borrowings on there. So you can see uh, the borrowings. There's the convertible notes. Um, the borrowings haven't really changed. This is the big number here. There's the convertible notes we were talking about. So they brought in some convertible notes and it looks to me like they issued some convertible notes and then they've gone down in value during the year and they've booked that a uh, great big um a, a profit on the, on the reduction in the value of those notes so um it looks to me like they raised significantly more than uh, 347 um uh, and uh, they've actually gone down in value uh, and those are really the big numbers there's not a lot else there's a little bit of other loans and borrowings um uh, on the uh, on the non-current side um a little bit of trade and other payables um nothing excessive there you know that they're, they're reasonably quick in terms of um paying those trade and other payables so it seems um and then the share capital and we can see the share capital so there's the investment um uh, that's the, uh, the the share premium and the merger reserve uh, and then we can see here that the losses are mounting and so the strength of the balance sheet is going down and uh well this is the end of december we're recording this at the end of april so it's my guess that unless they've raised money since the end of the year, uh, these guys now have a negative balance sheet. That would be my um, my uh, my million dollar um, punt. So movement in equity, um, retained earnings. There's the retained earnings, booking losses. You know, basically they're just booking losses every single year, aren't they? Um, uh, there's the there's the kind of the, so, so interesting here. We got the share capital. So there's the share capital coming through in 2019. That's the the track. So so this was kind of you know this was raised from UK um, uh, shareholders. This was then the kind of you know the money raised through the SPAC. Um, so that was reversing into the SPAC. If you remember, um, we talked about that. And then um, uh, we've got the yeah. So the warrants won't obviously won't appear on here because they are debt, not equity. So they'll be in the cash flow, but not part of this um, uh, uh, this 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 part. Um, uh, and so they're making losses. Interesting enough, um, lots of share based payments. So there's um, lots of staff at Kazoo, um, no doubt, uh, maybe watching this, um, uh, wondering whether um, those shares that they are being issued um, with are, are going to have any value at all. We'll come on, look at the share price um, at the end of this video. Anyway, um, so basically, these guys, um, they've, you know, they've raised a billion, they've lost a billion. That's kind of, you know, our, 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 our summary there. Um, let's go and look at the um, cash flow. Um, now, the cash flow is, is, is you know, really the important one. Um, so this number here, this is kind of the core cash flow. We see that these guys are burning cash, 86 million, 221 million and 374 million. That 375 million pound cash burn um, is after adding back the amortization or that impairment loss. If you remember the impairment loss, the write down of the goodwill, that's just an accounting transaction that doesn't affect your cash. So when we take our, our loss, which is up here, uh, and we want to turn it into a cash loss, we add back these non-cash items. Um, and then this movement in the warrants, you remember they booked that as a profit. That's actually, you know, that's just, that's just a, a gain an accounting adjustment. Uh, and therefore, uh, um, uh, in, in effect, um, uh, that's a non-cash item. Anyway, so, um, and then we've got the movement in working capital and really the, the number we're interested in here is the inventory. So you'll notice that last year they spent a lot of money buying cars for sale and this year they sold cars and they've been buying. Now, in an ideal world, that would be about a stable. They would, you know, they'd be buying for every car they bought in, they'd be selling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so quite interesting that they've grown the top line. Obviously, they can't do that um, every single year. So this is why I think this number, number uh, 375 million. Um, even so, with that reduction in inventory, uh, it's at 250 million. 250 million loss, better than the previous year, but they're still burning cash. Don't forget, these guys have got... 250 million in the bank. So if you're generating a loss of between 250 million and 375 million a year, and you've got 250 million in the bank, you've basically got less than a year to get cash positive, or you're going to have to go back to the shareholders or to the banks and raise more money. 
And I guess the real question is, how long can these guys carry on raising money before the people who are funding them just go, no, nope, not interested? Because I can't see where on that income statement that they're going to start to move into profitability and positive cash flow from their trading operations. So these guys are very much at the behest of their backers. Um, and maybe the backers have got very deep pockets or maybe the backers are thinking, you know what, in a world of low interest rates, I'd be prepared to lend to you at zero interest rate. But today, less interested, so to speak. Um, next section is the investing activities. Here it is. Um, 75 million, not a huge amount, quite a big investment going on the previous year. Uh, very little this year. They can't afford it. They haven't got any cash, you know, so it's really, you know, don't buy anything unless you absolutely have to. You'll notice there's a little bit of acquisition going on. So these guys are still growing, growing through acquisition. That top line, it's not all organic growth. They're buying similar companies. You know, they're basically trying to dominate. They're trying to become the Amazon of the secondhand car market. And uh, what they really want is every time anybody buys a secondhand car, they're going to buy it from Kazoo. Well, maybe 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 they'll achieve their strategy maybe not so uh this last section of the cash flow this is the um the funding of the business so let's look at what's going on it so really we're kind of you know the the, the key numbers here is that you know the, the the uk company issued ordinary shares um the um the, the, that company then backed into the spac and raised another 600 million uh, and then has issued these convertible notes of 460 million so you'll remember um that the the and actually i'll just show you the numbers here because it's important that we we see that so they raised 460 million okay from the issue of the convertible notes and on the balance sheet they're sat with the market of 347 million okay and that difference between those two numbers has allowed them to book that difference as a profit uh, and that is this number here that kind of income now obviously if those notes go back up in value they're going to have to book that as a massive great loss so actually if they become a really strong company they're going to start incurring losses and this is just you know i mean for me this is this is crazy 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 but hey um you know it's been signed by the auditors, so they're allowed to do it. Hey, what do I know? Um, so this is this is just you know this is quite creative accounting going on here. That you know technically they owe you know four hundred or they've raised four hundred sixty million from these convertible notes. Um, you can see there's some other big numbers. I, I'm just going to kind of stocking loans. There's kind of proceeds and um, uh, and you can kind of match these numbers against each other um, to see what the kind of the the you know the the, the difference is because what they're doing is that that they're 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 refinancing. So all of this all of these numbers here, this is all about kind of refinancing, and you kind of just need to take those um, uh, together. Interest, the interest they're paying has gone up because they've got all of those convertible notes. So this is now interest bearing. Um, they can't afford the interest, but they, they have to pay it. Um, and they've got some lease payments as well. So, you know, there you go. They start, you know, in this, in essence, what we're saying is that, you know, these guys are, let me just see if I can get all the numbers on the page. Here we go. So these numbers, you know, they're making cash loss. They're doing a little bit of investment and they're raising money, which is giving them a positive overall cash flow and, and allowing them to increase the, the money in the bank. But as we said before, even if you lose 250 million a year and you've got 250 million in the bank, you've got 12 months of grace. Um, so these guys, they've got to go back. They've got to raise more money. It's the only way they can survive. If the backers don't give them any more money, um, then it's basically game over. So this, you know, these guys are nowhere near out of the woods. And quite frankly, if they came to me and said, we need some more money, uh, even if I had that kind of money, I certainly wouldn't be putting into, into these guys because it's just, it's too risky. I mean, I'm not convinced that they're going to be around um, for, well, for very much longer um, in their current form. They, you know, they may go bust and people may cherry pick um, little bits and pieces so you know the concept will be there you know the, the the you know the cars will still be for sale somebody will pick them up um but i'm not convinced by this company um as a whole so there we go there we have kazoo now i did promise you that we'd have a look at their um 
uh, their share price. So here is their share price. Um, uh, and you can see that if you were an early stage investor, you have lost well, you've lost your shirt. You've lost basically everything. I mean, this has gone from what is it? Two, uh, three, two, n nearly three hundred. We're in dollars here, by the way. So nearly three hundred dollars a share down to uh, today. It's at one dollar seventy six cents. So it's basically, you know, nothing. You've lost everything, um, you know. And, and quite frankly, um, if you'd invested it, if you're going to invest in a SPAC, um, which is just basically a shell company with a bunch of cash and a great story, then, um, you know what, caveat emptor. I mean, you know, you've got to you've got to understand the story behind it. And some people did make money out of uh, out of SPACs and the early SPACs. But, but you know, this was um, this was a SPAC um, that just picked up, you know, kazoo and and you know, the, the previous analysis of, uh, I gave, you know, was was not very positive. So I'm still not convinced by this. There you go. There's the market cap today. It's 68, um, uh, 68 million. Um, that's about a, you know, that's about, I don't know, uh, 50, 58 million um, pounds, for example. So 58 million pounds, the net asset value, the balance sheet. I mean, it's basically trading at book value, isn't it? Uh, the, the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the the book value is 73 million um so it's actually well, it's trading at below book value um so you know that's the confidence um that the the stock market has in this company is that it's trading at below book value don't forget you know if you do close the business and you sell all the assets you know a lot of those assets are um are intangible so you're not going to get any money for them so um you know I'm not convinced that this is still a buy. You know, you you can pay one dollar seventy six per share and say it's really really cheap. You can still go to zero and you could lose your entire investment. Or you may be sitting there thinking, Ah, Ted, I I know something you don't. Um, this is a great opportunity. This is a great growth story. Um, you know, from the ashes, um, uh, the phoenix will rise. Bloody bloody blah. Uh, this is going to be the next Tesla meets Facebook meets meets. Amazon meets, you know, whoever it is, Microsoft and, and, and you know, uh, whoever. Um, uh, and, and this is a great buying opportunity. But, but you know, quite frankly, you know, it's cheap. It's cheap for a reason um, and it can get cheaper. So if you do um, buy shares, I would be careful about betting, um, betting the bank. So there we go. There is Kazoo. I hope you found that analysis useful and uh, informative. Um, as I said, um, please do remember to like, share and subscribe. Um, if you've got any companies you'd like me to have a look at, then just drop a note in the um, in the comments box. Um, give me a little bit of background um, and I will see if I can uh, have a look at them. I have been a little bit off the pace um, recently. Um, so apologies for that. Been very busy. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Hello, thank you for watching that video and I hope you found its contents useful. If you want to know more about what we do here at Talk Financials, you can find out on talkfinancials.com uh, where we uh, will explain how we design, develop and deliver training workshops for companies all over the world. Uh, we've worked with over 300 companies in over 35 countries around the world, uh, helping them to understand financial statements, to understand uh, business finance and to become fluent in the language of business finance. Uh, if you're interested in, in developing your own skills in how you read and interpret financial statements, um, I, I've developed an online workshop. Uh, which is available all you got to do is click on the qr code there uh, point your camera at the qr code um, and that will take you through to an online workshop uh, and it will help you to improve your own ability to read and interpret financial statements uh, i've also written a book called how to talk finance uh, and again that is available um, if you click on the qr code it'll take you through to the amazon website where you can buy the book either as a hard copy or as a kindle edition um, and that's really everything from me. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, it'd be great to stay in touch. If you'd like to contact me, um, then again, just click on the QR code um, uh, and send me a message. Uh, and good luck with uh, your financial analysis. I hope it goes well.